Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. Before we start, I want to say Happy New Year everybody. I wish you guys more gains in the next year and great health. And now, let's start with the video. So we're gonna start with this physique update of Nick Walker. He posted a couple of photos heading into this new year. And what I found here particularly interesting, aside from Nick's physique, that does look very freaky right now, aside from that, I found Matt Jensen's comment, very interesting, Matt Jensen is of course Nick Walker's coach, and previously, in the previous offseason, Nick Walker hasn't been working with him, he was working with Dom Super Sliced, and I made numerous videos in which I was telling you guys, Nick's arms are getting too big, and a lot of you, a lot of you liked the videos and agreed with me, but a lot of you disagreed. A lot of you were like, no, 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 there is no such thing as big arms, you're just jealous because he has big arms. But as you can see, his coach is kind of agreeing with me. He says, 2023, we are putting the arms in chill mode. So, Matt Jensen now does not want Nick to grow bigger arms. And as I was following Nick's offseason, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking he's training his arms way too often. I was prepping myself this summer and I was watching Nick's YouTube videos. I did the same thing last year. I also prepped for a show and I watched Nick's training videos because they are really motivating their raw videos of just him training with music in the background and that's it. And I remember when he was working with, uh, with Matt Jensen, when he was prepping with him, he did not really train his arms that much. He was doing maybe like a few sets of biceps after back and maybe a few sets of triceps after after chest or shoulders and that was really it like he wasn't really doing a lot of volume for arms but when he was working with dom super sliced it was different now why is that well i assume that it was because dom did not have the authority over Nick and Nick made the decision himself he probably wanted to have the most impressive arms in the history of bodybuilding because he has the potential to do that and he probably thought you can't really have two big arms like it's gonna just make your physique look more impressive which I disagree with there kind of are body parts like that that can't be too big like arms maybe and back but that's because not everybody has genetics like freaking Nick Walker like how many people can make their arms actually too big Big for their frame especially if the rest of their body is as massive as muscular as Nick Walker's I mean that's basically an anomaly but it happens as you can see Nick's arms in my opinion have been too big on this Mr. Olympia stage and also back when he was working with Matt Jensen I listened to these guys they were actually talking about this openly Matt was holding Nick back from training his arms too much and Matt was kind of in the driver's seat, you know, he has the authority over Nick Walker. Nick Walker respects him. He didn't even want to prep Nick Walker for the Arnold Classic uh, this year because he knew what the previous year has done to Nick's body. Like, he prepped, like, for how many shows? He won his pro card, New York, Arnold, Mr. Olympia. That's four shows in about a year. That is too much, you know, doing the pre-contest drugs and all kinds of stuff. It definitely wouldn't be smart. It would not be healthy if Nick prepped for that Arnold Classic. Matt did not want to allow him to prep for the Arnold. He didn't want to participate in that. And so Nick Walker went to another coach and in that entire offseason, it seemed like Nick was kind of doing whatever he wanted and he wasn't really respecting uh, Dom's authority. I also listened to Dom's interview with Rx Muscle and that's the impression that I get. He was Dom was struggling to tell, to order Nick to do things because he didn't want to listen to him. And now that Nick is finally back with Matt Jensen, who actually has the authority, who can tell him what to do, and if Nick doesn't want to do it, he can go and find another coach, a new coach, and I don't think Nick is going to go to another coach, he said so many times until he got back with Matt that he's going to finish his career with Matt Jensen, but I can see that Nick is pretty immature, and I don't know, like, I wouldn't be too surprised if he changed this opinion again, but who knows, we'll see. As for now, I think he's going to listen to Matt Jensen's advice and he's not going to train his arms too often in this offseason, which I think is a great thing for Nick Walker. Yes, big arms are super impressive, but in order to win the Mr. Olympia, you need to have more balance. You can't have standout body parts like that. 
If Tom Platts wanted to win the Mr. Olympia, maybe he would have done better if he didn't train his legs as much or as hard, but he wanted to have the biggest legs of all time and to be one of the best bodybuilders of his era. He achieved that, Nick achieved that. If Nick wants to take it to another level to actually win the Mr. Olympia, he needs to bring better shape, better proportions, better symmetry and balance, and he can do that by laying off the arms putting them in chill mode as Matt says and I'm sure these guys will do that and I think it's going to work very well. I do think Nick's arms were too big and it did look bad. I think it, it ruined his symmetry and his balance and if they fix this in the next offseason I think Nick could actually jump a spot or two and if the other guys come in a little bit off and I'm sure Nick is going to peak properly with Matt Jansen he can win the Mr. Olympia. If you guys disagree you can tell me down below. By the way guys, if you are trying to get shredded, if you're trying to get leaner and you're doing your cardio, this is something you must include before your cardio, a Samir Banut Lava 196, it is basically a fat burner with a lot of natural ingredients, a lot of great extracts that will help your fat loss, it helps but it's completely natural, so if you guys need some help losing weight you can try it, the link is down below and if you use the code even you get a 15% discount and also if you're trying to help me make more videos if you support this channel just use the code even and buy whichever product of the old school apps you like thank you guys so much all right next we have hunter labrada with a posing video on a wednesday two days before the mr olympia so in multiple posts uh, hunter labrada was saying that this year's version of him was his best ever that he was never this lean and this big and i kind of disagreed with that because what we saw on stage was rather underwhelming compared to his previous version from last year but now seeing this video at two days out of mr olympia i can see what he was trying to say i can see that this was in fact his leanest ever he said he was heavier this year so if he was actually heavier and this lean at this point then yeah you could argue that this was his overall best package he just didn't peak properly and that's like the only thing that matters it only matters what we see on stage it does not matter how good you looked two days before the show but seeing this video kind of proves to me that hunter could have done much much better had he peaked properly so as you can see right here in the back in this back transition part of the pose you can see that his lower back was crispy like it was really lean he did not have a lot of fat a lot of i mean he didn't have basically any body fat his glutes were also very conditioned let me show you the video actually you'll get a better idea like this so as you can see legs dry vascular and pretty separated for hunter's standards uh, upper body as well look at the chest how how separated how uh, shredded how lean it is because i don't think i ever saw hunter this shredded this is surprising to me look at the separation in the triceps and, and the lats from this from this side as well also look at the glutes and the hamstrings overall he was dry as you can see the chest was very flat he torn that pack and that is hurting him but he was not carved up yet Look at the back, like the back was never this dry, this lean, I haven't really seen this from Hunter and look at the glutes, like he was definitely in his best conditioning right here and this is Wednesday after one meal only, so he was definitely not carved up but this is his overall best look, which is exactly what he says in the caption of this video, so I'm wondering if this is his best look on Wednesday morning after only one meal, does this mean that he actually stayed relatively full and that that one meal was just enough for him to get you know dry and conditioned and also pretty full like this is his fullness this is what his fullness should have been on stage because he does seem a little bit flat but he said that this was his absolute best maybe I, I would assume that he would look better after at least one day of carbing up he did look like he over carb for the show which was on friday so he had two days of eating and he over carbed and i would assume that he would peak somewhere in between i wouldn't assume that he peaked two days before the show early in the morning after only one meal but he says 
that this was his absolute best during the 2022 prep and he says that he understands peaking much better now that he thinks next year they're going to nail it uh, i'm not really sure what kind of conclusions he he came up with uh, uh, after watching this video and after analyzing everything but i guess we'll find out if he peaks properly the next show he does and this time he can't just do the olympia he needs to compete again he needs to win a show if he wants to go over there so i don't know which show is he gonna choose but I'm curious to see if these guys actually figured it out, if they cracked it, if they're gonna pick him properly, if he's going to be really conditioned and really full at the same time, the next show he does. But a point I'm trying to make and that Hunter tried to make by posting this was that this year was his leanest ever, he just didn't peak properly and he thinks he can fix this mistake next time he competes. You guys want some controversy? Well, let's get started. Sarah Villegas, if that's how you pronounce her last name. She is a former women's physique Miss Olympia champion and she lost this year. Now, if you guys don't really follow women's physique, and I'm sure most of you don't, you might remember Shaniki Grant. She really made this division popular. She was like a woman's physique version of Ronnie Coleman. She was just perfect, man. She had perfect genetics. But she was edged out, I think, two years ago by Sarah because of conditioning, simply. I don't think it was anything else. Shanique had incredible shape, like insane genetics, ridiculous genetics. And Sarah wasn't as blessed, but she knew how to come in peeled. And she won that Olympia two times and became Miss Olympia two times in a row and then this year she lost her title because as she says in her description she tried to come in softer but she didn't try to flex her muscles as hard because she wanted to make her look a little bit softer which obviously didn't work in her favor and she lost her title this is what she explains in the caption of this post which i'm not gonna read to you because it's too long but i will read you the highlighted part she's showing her glutes in this post and she says i am more conditioned than your favorite male bodybuilder on my softest day and she shows us her glutes and as you can see they are very shredded but this this started a controversy so many instagram pages are now making comparisons trying to compare her conditioning to other male bodybuilders conditioning and when i'm looking at this at these glutes i can see that they are very much peeled and if you want to compare them to bodybuilders who was the most conditioned out of all of the bodybuilders let's say that guys in the top 10 i think it has to be nick walker and this is what his glutes his back his conditioning looked like do i think nick was more conditioned than sarah i wouldn't say so i think sarah was in fact more conditioned than him and probably more conditioned than any other bodybuilder in the open this doesn't really mean much these guys open guys could be more conditioned if they wanted to sacrifice the fullness but they just can't do it because they would lose they wouldn't place as well you need to find a perfect balance uh, you need to bring crazy fullness while being as conditioned as possible so that's why those guys are not super shredded but nick was really really lean really shredded i would say pretty close to, to Sarah, but maybe she has a little bit more separation and she's a little bit drier, especially in the glutes. Now, maybe the situation is a little bit different in a smaller division, classic physique. These guys, many of them are not really trying to bring, you know, as full of a package as possible because they do have a weight limit and they need to show as much detail as possible. And one of the most shredded, one of the most detailed guys has to be Michael the Bull. So if you take a look at his glutes, would you say that these glutes are more conditioned than Sarah's? I would say they're pretty close. I would say they're very, very close, but I think Sarah kind of is edging him out. I think Sarah has a little bit sharper glutes, but in this case, it's very, very close. It's hard to say who is more conditioned unless we see them both on the stage compared. What do you guys think about Chris Bumstead? Are his glutes sharper than Sarah's? I would say so. I think they are. I think this is the one that edges her out. Chris's glutes were crisp, man. They were hard as a rock. Like, I don't know what the hell Hanen did to him, but his glutes were never this shredded. As you can see, this, this old video of Chris posing, he was, like, he was lean. He was really, really lean. 
but he did not have that crazy maturity, that crazy hardness that he had in the glutes in this past Olympia. But in this post, she did say your favorite male bodybuilder, not a classic physique guy. I mean, classic physique guys are bodybuilders, just their division is called differently. However, let's take a look at the 212 bodybuilders and let's take a look at uh, Sean Corrido, for example. Like, his glutes are known for crazy conditioning. Do I think his glutes were more conditioned than Sarah's? I wouldn't say so. I think she actually does have more conditioning, better conditioning, more separation, uh, better dryness and hardness uh, in the glutes than all the categories that have bodybuilding in their name uh, and that are male divisions. So 212 and the Open, I think Sarah is actually right. I think she actually does have really crazy conditioning, better than most male bodybuilders. And like the reason why she didn't win this show was because she didn't try to uh, showcase her conditioning. For some reason, she thought she would look, she would do better if she was a little bit softer, which backfired. Obviously, you need crazy conditioning for this division. That's how she won against Shanique, and that's what she should stick with if she wants to keep winning. Now let's move on to the last part of this video, and the one that many of you will probably find the most interesting here. It is another controversy, it is a new video of Callum Von Moger. I am not gonna play the whole thing for you guys, you can see it on the Instagram if you want. It's a, it's a long message, I will cut out some parts and I will show them to you before I analyze it. But really, what he said in this video is that he's coming back, that's what he's saying. Now, after all the incidents that we had with Callum uh, these past couple of years, it's really hard to trust him. I mean, the last thing that we heard was that he jumped out of a second story window. That's right, like through the window, through the glass. And the rumors are that he was high on a lot of stuff and that he's an addict for a couple of years now, that he completely ruined his life, uh, his relations with his family and friends. And like we've seen so many incidents from him. But as you can see now, he's back. At least that's what he says. Jay Cutler is welcoming him back, a lot of people are in the comments, and he says, I'm ready to return here in 2023. Now, the way he writes here does look a little bit better than it looked before throughout these couple of years of him doing whatever he was doing, whenever he would say something like he's back, he's gonna be okay, it did not look like he was fine. However, this time around, I'm getting different vibes, and also in the video, he does look a little bit more healthy. Let me show you a little part of it, and take a look at it, guys. Tell me what do you think based on this video. Does he really seem healthy? Hey, guys. I just wanted to finally check in with you here um, to say that I'm doing so much better. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I've been online. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, earlier this year, I was in a uh, bad accident, and I, I really hurt myself. And um, so I had to take some time off to heal and recover. Um, and also I was going through a lot at the time. So I apologize for my absence, but I am, I'm doing so much better now. I got all the help that I needed. And um, I'm finally back here in California, which is great. And I'm looking forward to, um, to now getting back into a, into a really good routine, uh, into a fitness routine, training again at the gym. And uh, I've been, you know, tidying up my diet this uh, last few weeks, which is which has been tricky because I've had such a nice break. But I want to now just leave uh, 2022 in the past. It was a very tough year for me, uh, maybe for you too. I'm not sure. We can talk about that later. Um, and uh, which is another point. I do want to talk about a lot about this last year again at some at some time. Uh, I'll probably do that on a, on a podcast on YouTube. We can. Uh, I want to break down, you know, everything that I've been through and. Uh, and just, yeah, be open and, and be real with you guys so you can kind of see where I've been and what I've been through and how I got through it. So on that note, uh, I'm excited for next year. It's just around the corner. I'm excited to be seeing you guys here again on social media, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, whatever it is where we, where we want to hang out. So uh, I'm really excited to be here again. I've got some uh, great new opportunities on the horizons, uh, some new companies I'll be working with in the, in the new year, which is great. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. So look, happy new year to you all. I uh, hope you all stay safe and I'll see you in the new year. Cheers. I don't know what you guys think. You can tell me down below your opinion, your honest opinion. But based on what I'm seeing right here, 
I mean, he doesn't look like physically. He doesn't look as as good as he looked back when he was training really hard. He does not look very big. He looks like he lost a lot of weight. And I don't know. I don't think his beard looks, you know, as tidy as as well trimmed like it was when he was really healthy. Because this guy cares a lot about his about his appearance. And uh, in the past couple of years, he kind of let go of himself. In this video, he does sound healthier. He does sound like he's really clean. I also heard that he was in a rehab and maybe, based on this video, maybe I would say that it went well, that he actually cleaned out because he does seem better. He says that he started his diet, which is kind of a challenge for him because he was eating God knows what in the past uh, maybe couple of years and that he's getting back to training. I really hope he's better. He had so much potential in classic physique and he was such a big influence on social media like i watch his youtube channel i watch his videos of him training it was really motivating i would like to have this guy back in our fitness community i hope he's going to stay clean and that he's not lying to us once again i hope he's actually back and that he didn't lose his mind in the past couple of years because that's how it seemed at least to me whatever you guys think about callum and mogger's comeback or whichever part of this video Tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much. I wish you Happy New Year. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.